Hello everybody, Martin Hazy, nice to see you. I'm with Richard Turner. Now Richard's an entrepreneur, South Australian based, done work right across Australia and internationally. Richard, welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Entrepreneurship, I recently wrote a blog about are entrepreneurs born or are they made? And it's a big topic. I'm fascinated by your views. Look, I think that'd be a great question for my wife. Uh, she would say I'm definitely on the spectrum. And, uh, and I think when you look at entrepreneurs, and we've had a lot of experience dealing with entrepreneurs, they have this innate ability to intently focus and lock everything away, which I don't think is something that's taught. It's, um, it's something that they just are able to do. I've watched you, Richard, over the years, and I've noted that you've moved from several different industries. And I'm wondering, is the skill to reinvent, is that kind of core to being an entrepreneur? Is that what an entrepreneur is? Someone who can move between different industries? Is there, is there a difference between being an entrepreneur and a business owner, I guess? Yeah, look, when you're starting a business, if you don't see the opportunity to reinvent and substantially change how an industry operates, you have a flawed business model because you are not going to be able to compete against existing business with uh, a small, small amount of capital to start with when you're competing against players on their own playing field that have got established businesses, they've got the infrastructure, they've got the processes, they've got the customers, you are not going to be able to compete. You're going to burn a lot of money and go nowhere unless you have a model to change how the industry operates to give you the advantage. Oh, look, you, you have to be creative as part of the innovation process. And what we've managed to do a number of times, and Zen Energy is an example of this, is not only do you redefine how the industry operates, you actually give it a new name. So we never called our business a solar company, we called it a home energy business. And by doing that, suddenly you're the leader of that new market. So if you go into an existing market and you, again, try and compete on their terms under the, the banner of the existing industry, you're going to struggle. So you re not only redefine how the industry operates, give it a new name, use your new model to redefine and give that industry a new name and suddenly you're the leader of that industry. Richard, how do you keep yourself entrepreneur fit and what I mean there is that constant demands of the marketplace the constant demands of the business trying to lead some balance in your life how do you do it it's that's a difficult question balance is a real occupational hazard for entrepreneurs and I've seen a lot of them and and I've seen a lot of divorces and I think about 70 or 80 percent of entrepreneurs will end up going through a divorce simply because of this intent ability to focus lock everything out including you know the, the family um, and it is a it is a real problem so you need to be able to keep life balance and uh, and uh, keep a focus on the people who support you because going through a divorce, I can tell you for an entrepreneur, you will lose three or four years out of your life and uh, that will set you back a mile and, uh, and cause a lot of other issues in terms of evolving and going forward. But so, something that I've been through, I'm, I'm no exception to that rule. Um, and uh, keeping the creative juices flowing is not always easy. Um, at the moment, I'm just taking a two-month break to completely reset and recharge after exiting Zen. Richard, I'd like to talk about luck. So many people say that entrepreneurs are lucky, they're just in the right place at the right time. You've done it all. What's your view? Look, in the early days, there may be an element of luck, but really for a good entrepreneur, it's about identifying when the market's ready to introduce the right product at the right time. If you introduce, you could have a great idea for a product and it's a fantastic product, but if you introduce it at a time the market's not ready for it, you're going to be burning a lot of cash trying to educate the market and you'll probably go out of business doing it. If you come into the market too late, 
then you're competing against people that have already taken the space and that's going to cost you a lot of money and you'll probably go out of business. You've got to time it just at the right point where commercialisation of that product is imminent and you've got control of the market. A lot of people think about entrepreneurship but not a lot of people do entrepreneurship. Everyone's got a good idea but not everyone turns it into a good business. I've been to plenty of barbecues, family barbecues, where everyone's got an idea for a business, but there's so few people that actually can take it to market. It's hard work, and I think people realise it's hard work, and people who work in small businesses see the work the owners put in, and there's many stages to a small business. So the startup phase is one stage, then you get to that million dollar revenue stage, and there's a whole heap of other problems kick in, like debtors and inventory and managing people um, and managing capital. Uh, businesses continually evolve and go through these, these stages and they're all hard work. There's no easy stage in running a business. Richard, it's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Nice to see you. Well, thank you so much to Richard Turner. We've had an opportunity here to listen firsthand from a celebrated Australian entrepreneur who has spoken and shared with us his insight into creativity, innovation, reinvention, technology and really what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur time and time and time again. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you took a lot out of that. Great to see you. Bye now. Now, Martin, you've got long legs and I've got short legs, so I'm trying to slow you down. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an outtake? <laughs> <laughs> um, just rephrase that question. <laughs> that could be a nice interlude.